All right, moving on to part two of biological basis of behavior. We're going to look at the nervous and endocrine systems to begin with, and here are the learning objectives. All right, first of all, the nervous system. This consists of like two main parts. Your brain's got to communicate with your body, but your brain is part of your nervous system. In fact, it and your spinal cord are the nervous system. You notice this chart, it's laid out in a hierarchy. So you should probably come back to this after we go over the, the, the parts and your brain likes hierarchy, so it'll help you remember it. Apply it to yourself too, okay? Remember the self-reference effect. All right, so our central nervous system, as I mentioned before, consists of your brain and spinal cord, okay? It runs down the middle of your body. Okay, without your brain, uh, it's, it does everything for you. It's, it's you, it gives your humanity, your emotions, your motion, your perceptions, everything. Running down off of your spinal cord are nerves that run towards your organs and to your muscular system. And those are all peripheral nerves. If you think of it as it's peripheral to your nervous system, like the periphery, you think of peripheral vision, it's what you see to the sides. So that's what a peripheral nervous system. It's all those nerves to the side of your central nervous system. Okay, and we look at nerves. When we talk about sensory nerves or sensory neurons, these are always nerves that run from your body to your brain because they're picking up the senses where you're and carrying that information to your brain well it will transpose it into electrical impulses called action potentials and then your brain will sort out what senses that you're experiencing motor neurons always run away from the brain so this is if you initiate the movement of your arm for example you would send a message from your brain down this, the motor neurons and makes it move motor is movement so you can remember that it goes away from your brain Interneurons are interesting little neurons that really they reside in your spinal cord and it's about the only time your brain doesn't control everything is when an interneuron takes takes effect when you have a reflex and we'll go over how that works too coming up right now your peripheral nervous system um, is divided again in that hierarchy it was your central nervous system your your brain and your spinal cord okay on the right side, your central nervous system stops, but your peripheral nervous system will continue into two division. You have a somatic nervous system and an autonomic nervous system. Your somatic nervous system is there to control all your voluntary movements. So when you tell your arm to move or your toe to wiggle, that's your somatic nervous system in effect. Okay, it's all those things you do voluntarily. The autonomic nervous system it's kind of the opposite of that, but it does all those things that you don't have to think about. Okay, it puts you in a fight or flight mode. It causes your heart to race, it causes you to breathe, it causes your heart to beat. Wouldn't it suck if you had to think all the time and voluntarily make your voluntarily make your heart beat? Be kind of tough to sleep, I think. Okay, so the autonomic nervous system now breaks into two more parts, which is your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system controls all those things that put you in fight or flight mode. And I have a diagram coming up later that will point out all those things that it does. So it's basically when you have that startle reflex or you that anxiety, and then your body deals with that stress and it prepares you to either run away or to fight whatever that threat is. Once the threat is gone, the parasympathetic nervous system sets in and brings all of those things back into normal heart rate, um, blood pressure, all of those things. Digestion, we'll, we'll show you what they are in a minute. Okay, so on the left is your sympathetic nervous system. Remember, this is a division um, from the peripheral nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, down to the sympathetic and parasympathetic, which are the two parts of your autonomic. Now you look over here, this is what happens when you become startled. So, and a lot of animals have this too, because they fight or flight like a deer in the forest. If you're sneaking up on a deer and he's just grazing away, and then you accidentally step on a little branch as you're trying to get close to him, the deer will immediately look up and face the threat. And that's what you will do too. Um, in people, if you're watching it, their pupils will dilate, which means they get bigger. That little round black part of their eye gets bigger so they can take in more of their environment and see things more clearly and so that they can face that danger. Your heartbeat accelerates, it pumps blood, it gives you oxygen into your muscles so that they're ready to, to move. Your stomach will inhibit digestion. Okay, so it'll stop digesting food, which takes a lot of energy. And if you're gonna run away for a long time, you wanna conserve your energy. Your pancreas is an internal organ, where it will stimulate glucose release. 
So it sends the sugar, which is really what your body burns for energy. So your body is ready to run away or to fight. Your adrenal glands, they will secrete epinephrine or norepinephrine. Um, this is another thing you know, this is, is adrenaline. Um, you, you may carry an EpiPen, or I'm sure you've seen EpiPens. They are basically filled with adrenaline. So when somebody has an anaphylactic reaction, they are injected with adrenaline, which helps them clear that up. Okay, the adrenaline gets you up, gets you moving, and it, it makes you um, at your physical peak when that's going through. Okay, moving down, you'll notice your bladder relaxes. You ever been so startled you pee a little bit? Well, if you did, it's because your bladder relaxed. Okay, and then it also stimulates ejaculation in males. Now on the other side, once a threat is passed, that parasympathetic nervous system pass takes over and your pupils contract, your heartbeat slows, your digestion comes back, your gallbladder kicks in, and your bladder contracts once again. Okay, and it allows those that blood flow to the sex organs. Um, so it basically calms you back down to a normal state. So the brain and spinal cord, which is your central nervous system and the peripheral run off the sides here into your arms, into your, uh, into your internal organs and down your legs and so on. Um, that's your central nervous system. But how it communicates when you learn something, it creates neural networks. Neural networks are there. Um, there are so many connections, like you have trillions of connections. It's the dendrites will change of the neuron and make more connections so that you become more efficient in whatever you do. So a simplified thing would be like, and this is, is true for anything you learn. You get better at it as you go because your brain becomes more efficient. You may have heard of, you know, like muscle memory in sports or stuff. Well, it's a misnomer. There is no such thing as muscle memory. Your muscles do not have a memory. But if you repeat a task over and over, your brain forms those neural networks necessary to make that muscle action more smooth and more efficient because your brain is more efficient because of all the connections that the synapses have changed to make it work. So you're going to learn a musical instrument. So you have these lessons, practice, master classes, music camps, time spent with musical friends, and all of a sudden these things representing clusters of neurons make connections with other neurons, and it becomes quite complicated. But as you do it, it makes more and more connections so that your brain becomes more and more efficient and better at it. And of course, at the end, whoops, at the end, once your brain has modified itself and it changes a lot. In fact, we were making more connections than we ever thought you could make. It's like, I can't remember the exact number, but I'm going to tell you in class, it's, it's, a, it's astonishing. Your brain is entirely different after a day. But at the end, your output would be beautiful music after all that rehearsal and all the neural connections made. It's the same thing if you're shooting a free throw in basketball. You get better at it the more you practice it. If you practice it properly, your brain makes those connections and you do it more easily. Same when you learn how to attack a math problem. The brain creates networks, makes it better. That's why like a, somebody who is blind and reads Braille with one finger, when we look at their brain, that part of their cortex dedicated to that finger to the sense of that finger is actually thicker than it is in normal people because those networks actually thicken up the cortex of the brain. Um, when Einstein was dead, they looked at his, when he died, they looked at his brain and they saw parts of his brain that you'll see later on are, that were involved in logic were actually thicker than they were in the average person. So was that because he was born with thicker areas there or was it because he thought about those kinds of things more often than anybody else which made that part thicker? probably a combination of both. So inside your spinal cord, we were talking about those interneurons. Um, and this is where your reflex occur. You know, when you put your hand over something and you pull it away quickly before you're even aware of it, maybe like a, a stove element, you put your hand on a stove element and you pull it away before you even know if it's hot. Sometimes it's even off, but you still pull it away. Now, obviously a reflex is a great thing for survival. Um, these reflexes keep you safe, okay? Because you don't have to process the information before you make the move. So here's how it works. So this is a simple reflex. This person's got his finger over a flame. Don't ask me why he's got it over a flame. He's gonna get burned if he keeps playing like that. But what happens is these sensory neurons send the message, okay, through the peripheral nervous system into your central nervous, into the spinal cord. Now in the spinal cord, we have the interneuron. The interneuron, what it basically does is shift that impulse 
right back onto the motor neuron, which causes the finger to jerk away, often before the rest of that message gets to your brain and you actually realize why you've pulled it away. So it keeps you safe. So in this case, your spinal cord is kind of thinking for you. This person has an unusually small brain compared to his spine, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, so your electrochemical system is very speedy. And of course, neurotransmitters are the passage of this. We're going to look at another system that works very much the same way, only it's called the endocrine system. Okay, neurotransmitters for the speedy electrochemical in this one it's hormones they work slower because they're usually carried by blood to to the place that they need to to make the reaction happen okay and we'll look at you know the adrenal glands which i mentioned earlier and the epinephrine and norepinephrine adrenaline noradrenaline which gives you your fight or flight response you ever been full of adrenaline ready to run ready to to fight i'm ready to fight every period one anyhow Let's look at your pituitary gland to begin with. Now your pituitary gland, way up here, both sexes have it. This secretes many different types of hormones, uh, some which affect other glands. And one of the reasons we call this the master gland because it is an effect on all your other glands. Um, the hypothalamus is basically, uh, when we look at the brain parts, you'll see the hypothalamus is part of the limbic system and the pituitary gland kind of protrudes below it. And actually half of the pituitary gland is kind of part of your brain and half of it is part of the endocrine system. Okay, so moving on, we got the thyroids. These affect metabolism. Okay, how quickly you burn energy. The parathyroids over here help regulate the level of calcium in the blood. And remember, we want to keep things the same. So with your blood and everything, we want to keep the, the levels of glucose or sugar, which, which you burn. For energy, we want to keep it about the same, not too high, not too low, and there's way your endocrine system controls that. And this is for calcium in your blood, so the parathyroids control that. Your adrenal gland helps trigger the fight or flight. They've come up a couple of times now. Pump adrenaline or epinephrine. The pancreas, this is what regulates the level of sugar in your blood. So it secretes insulin. So for example, a diabetic, if you have childhood diabetes or diabetes type 1, it means your pancreas doesn't work. This is why diabetics have to test their blood on their own to see what is the glucose level in their blood. And if it becomes too high, they have to administer insulin or it can create a, a shock and a balance. And of course, if they're not careful, it can actually be deadly. Um, when you eat a lot of food, it usually puts a lot of sugar in there. So in a normal situation, the pancreas will then secrete the insulin. There is diabetes too, which is usually associated with a kind of a poor lifestyle and you can develop diabetes too. And it can be corrected uh, if you take measures and you catch it soon enough. Okay, moving on down, we got in the males. Guys, you're the only ones with these. Girls, you don't have the testes. Um, the testes, of course, secrete the male sex hormone, which is testosterone. The ovary in females, which is for the girls. That's what female means. More about that later. Um, anyways, it secretes estrogen. Okay, um, together they're known as gonads. So both sex have gonads. Males have testes, females have ovaries. I'm probably not telling you anything you didn't know there, right? So that's our nervous system and the endocrine system. We're going to look at the way our brain um, is put together in the next video. Okay, so we'll see you then.